Hello everyone, today I'm in Shimizu, Japan, which is located about 75 miles from Tokyo. And uh, they have this nice little downtown area here. There's a uh, train station directly ahead. And there's also some uh, shops and restaurants. There's a McDonald's across the street. And they also have a, a couple hotels here. And the one I'm staying at is um, off to the right. This is the Toyoko Inn Hotel. And um, it's actually a pretty nice hotel. I'd say it's a um, solid three-star hotel. It's about $70 per night. And um, I've been here for about three days now. And uh, I just came here from Tokyo. And I just wanted to see kind of what life is like more for like the uh, average uh, Japanese person. And I'm now just waiting here to uh, cross the street. And uh, one thing that's interesting about crosswalks in Japan is that they have a uh, chime that uh, will let you know when it's time to uh, cross. And it looks like this street, you also see there's the uh, chimer. Kind of sounds like a little uh, bird in the background. And it looks like this street, you can also go uh, diagonal across it. And um, so basically everyone crosses at the same time pretty much. And I'm just going to uh, walk over here to the train station. And uh, like most of uh, Japan, uh, it's pretty easy to uh, take a train here. That's how I uh, got here. And it looks like they also have um, a bus depot here too. And um, I have not tried to uh, take a bus yet. And they also have quite a few taxi cabs like this one here. And um, it seems to me like quite a few people um, in Japan, they uh, maybe don't have cars because there's so much public transportation. It's, it's really easy to take a uh, train pretty much everywhere. And then I guess once you're here, so you got all these taxis uh, lined up in the center there. And uh, so if you don't have a car, it's pretty easy to uh, catch a taxi cab. Or um, they also have Uber out here as well. Um, I've, I've looked at the Uber and it's, it's about, I would say, twice as expensive as it is in the uh, U.S. And uh, they also probably pay their drivers more out here. And here is the McDonald's. And let's see what's on the menu. I guess it kind of takes a little bit of time for it to cycle through its advertisements. But um, they also have, um, they got Big Macs here. Here, here's the menu. So a Big Mac with fries is uh, 750 yen. So that's about $6 for the uh, Big Mac meal. And then um, they also have uh, quite a few different um, burgers on their menu that I haven't seen. Like they have um, several teriyaki burgers. So th those seem to be popular here too. And they also have uh, fish sandwiches. And here's a uh, curry house cocoa and just gonna kind of show everyone um, what the prices are here. So it's a uh, curry, um, several uh, dishes of curry there. So basically like rice and uh, meat, you can have uh, chicken or uh, pork or beef and that's about $7 a plate. And uh, here's the train station here, but I'm actually going to um, just kind of walk back through this. They have a uh, mall area over here and uh just gonna kind of uh see what's going on here and we're also um, pretty close to the uh, coast as well and i found the quickest way uh, to the beach area is through the uh, train station and also next to mcdonald's they got this uh, lawson's convenience store and um that kind of has a little bit of an interesting background uh, I just kind of took a wild guess and I thought, you know, it probably was started like maybe following the Second World War, maybe some 
uh, GI soldier uh, kind of just stayed here afterwards but um, I was kind of wrong on that it is a US based company or it was and uh, they actually started in Ohio in the uh, 1930s but um, here's the uh, this covered mall area but um, yeah it wasn't until the uh, 1970s that uh, the uh, Lawson uh, convenience store started out here and uh, it was kind of interesting the uh, Lawson stores in Ohio those were bought out by Circle K and I'm sure most people have heard of uh, Circle K and uh, the Lawson stores here they are owned by Mitsubishi Corporation so I guess they consider them to be a uh, local company now and they got these uh, restaurants in here here's one looks like they got some uh, pork and uh, beef dishes and let's see seven eight hundred yen so that's about like six dollars each and um like most of the uh meat here it seems to be more um on the rare side so i would kind of remind the chef to uh cook the food just to be safe i mean maybe that's just me um here's a little uh, store over here got some sandals about a thousand yen that's about eight dollars some hats i kind of need a hat but um i would need something a little bit bigger and those hats were about fifteen dollars and here's uh, some sweatpants and jackets five thousand yen and uh, the jackets are eight thousand yen so that's about thirty five dollars for the sweatpants and about fifty dollars for the jacket sweatpants seem to be a little bit expensive but one thing that is cheap out here check this out the toilet paper get 12 rolls for 300 yen so that's about two dollars and fifty cents at least that seems quite a bit cheaper than it is in the u.s but um oh, here's some bicycles here and uh could rent these uh, 500 yen for the day so that's maybe three four dollars to rent a bike and one thing that's interesting is um, people don't really lock their bicycles up out here and uh, I mean I guess you could say well it's a cheap bicycle you know maybe they're just not concerned about it but still it's a bicycle though uh, so I guess uh, most people aren't too concerned about theft and here's a little clothing store this is women's clothing and uh, those shirts are about twelve dollars each and here's some socks for about seven dollars for so I can get one pair for oh three for seven okay just stopping at every store t-shirts there about four dollars anyhow um getting back uh to this um mall um it's it's kind of odd that uh so many of the stores here are uh closed and um so i've been here now about three days and it's a friday today so um, this place was a complete ghost town the last couple days, but I guess things kind of pick up uh, for Friday and uh, Saturday. But um, still a lot of uh, closed shops. And um, I'm not really sure why that is. And it kind of just has a, a kind of a stale feel to it. Um, maybe because there's so many just closed stores but and it, it's just so empty too i mean for you know here it is friday afternoon it's about three o'clock and um it's still pretty empty some more bicycles these look like a little bit nicer still don't see any how oh, that i don't see a lock on any of those so they are not worried about people walking away with their bicycles here. 
but yeah getting back to uh, the mall um, I'm not really sure if it's because um, online shopping just uh, hurt the uh, brick and mortar stores like it did in the US or if something else uh, have uh, slowed things down here if you happen to know it would be uh, helpful just to uh, leave a comment in the uh, comment section and because uh, I really don't know what the story is here's a women's uh, clothing store and those shirts are about uh, 1900 so that would be about $15 each and then here's some more closed uh, stores so we get this is kind of pretty typical for this area like you'll get a closed store and then maybe like one that's open and then two or three that are also closed and uh, I'm not too sure how long it's been like that for but it seems seems like uh, at one time this must have been doing pretty well and uh, it seems like it's a good location because we're really close to the coast and here's a knife shop so those knives are about eight nine dollars each here we got some gardening tools um, but you would really think um, this area would be doing better just because we're so close to the coast like I was saying, we're only maybe two, three blocks uh, from the, the beach. And you get a bag of carrots for 100 yen. It's like 90 cents. Bag of potatoes, 300 yen. It's about 250 a bag of potatoes. So potatoes and carrots are a good deal. And also one other thing the kind of uh cars they drive out here are kind of interesting it's um they have quite a few of these uh smaller cars i'm not sure we call them uh hatchbacks and uh the parking spaces even seem to be a little bit smaller here too and it's probably a lot easier to drive those smaller vehicles and there's another little store here what kind of snacks are these I'm not sure what those are, but they're about uh, $3 each. And here's a uh, fish store. And then further up, it, it um, kind of even empties out a little bit more, uh, more closed shops. And um, not really sure how much further I'm going to go up because it's just kind of block after block, just like this, where like here you get three stores that are closed and then there's one or two next to it that are still open. And... Um, as far as up above, it looks like there's still people living up there. And this building right here on the corner, that's kind of interesting uh, how they built that. Doesn't look like there's anyone on the uh, ground floor, but there's probably still people living up above. And that's almost like a triangle. And I'm now back at the train station and where the McDonald's is. And I'm just going to try to find uh, somewhere that's a little bit more interesting than where I was just at. And uh, I'm going to walk over to the uh, harbor area, which is basically about a block from here. And uh, just the way the uh, streets are configured, it's actually easier to um, pass through the uh, train station and uh, go through here than it is um, where I left off at. Just by the way the streets are configured and say a pretty short walk um, and as far as finding somewhere interesting um, you kind of also have to keep in mind that um, I'm, all, I'm also looking just for like everyday life like what it's like for everyday people to uh, live in Japan I mean of course I could go back to uh, Tokyo 
um, you know, downtown Tokyo, and I'm sure there's a lot more going on. But um, I, I just don't think that that kind of represents um, everyday life for most people. And here is the uh, train station entrance, the uh, JR train, uh, train line, Japan Rails. And uh, they have this, this area here is uh, pretty nice. It's a covered walkway. And uh, this goes on for about a block. And it uh, goes to the other side of the street. And also, it could be too, maybe I'm in the wrong um, part of town. I'll look into that. You know, maybe a different side. You know, if I walk like maybe a couple miles to the other side of town, maybe there's more going on. But the thing with that is, is that um, I'm on the coast right here. So there really should be uh, more happening here just because, you know, you have the beach area or not so much a beach but it's more industrial stuff and you'll see it in just uh just a minute um not so much recreation but um here you got a lot of uh industrial and can't really see it from here but mount fuji is actually pretty nearby it's um it's kind of shrouded in clouds over there but uh, it's about maybe 20 miles from here. And there's uh, where we were at earlier. There's a train leaving. And there's some hotels in the background. And that building in the front, um, as far as I can tell, that's uh, condos. And then the uh, Toyoka uh, Hotel is uh, behind that. And this seems to be a uh, somewhat busy port area. There's a lot of uh, trucks going in and out. And as far as I can tell, they pretty much bring everything in to these uh, ports here. And uh, these tanks, I'm not sure if those are um, oil or fuel. Um, one of them uh, says tuna on it. So, could, at least one of them is probably fish oil. And then they have a uh, fish market um, right on the other side of the street. And there might be more going on at that market than the uh, last one. And this is pretty neat how they have this pedestrian bridge just uh, crosses right over this street here. It looks like it's a, kind of a busy street. A lot of truck traffic. And then on the other side, there's the uh, harbor area and uh, Got a pretty good view from up here. Just a lot of industrial stuff. Um, looks like maybe there's a couple factories and uh, warehouses. And they, from what I can tell, they uh, pretty much bring the, the uh, seafood um, right in um, from, from boats right here in, in the harbor. So uh, the seafood here is pretty fresh. And when I first came here, I was thinking, you know, oh, you're probably going to get some really good deals on the seafood. But I was actually kind of surprised how expensive some of it is. Um, it's really not a whole lot cheaper than, than uh, back at home in the uh, U.S. I mean, I would say average price for most fish, at least $10, $15 a pound. I mean, that might not sound like much, but, you know, it's pretty much coming in from uh, right in this uh, coastal area. Well, hopefully not too close. Actually, this water doesn't look too bad. And I'm now outside of the fish market, and here's what's going on 
at the uh, harbor. Looks like there's a couple ships um, across the way that are docked and uh, not sure what, what those do. Um, some of them looks like they carry some sort of uh, chemical and then um, directly ahead is the blue dragon and that looks like it's some kind of a dredge it's got that uh, crane on the back and um, there are the uh, tanks that, that I, we saw earlier and uh, that one um, kind of off to the uh, left there it says Japan tuna on it and uh, that's what kind of made me think that uh, that's fish oil in there and just going to uh, walk in the fish market and see what's going on here they also have um, some restaurants here as well and these look like uh, various clam dishes And here's some assorted seafood. Uh, you get a fish platter that's 2,000 yen. That's about $15. And this stuff looks fresher over here. And then this fish here, like that other one, it seems like it's um, kind of dried. <laughs> Some frozen fish. And here's a uh, ice cream shop. Not really sure if uh, ice cream and uh, seafood uh, go together very well. I guess they do here. some more fish and these uh, fillets they're about $15 each and that looks like uh, tuna there and that one looks like uh, maybe squid or octopus that's about three dollars for that and some shrimp about three dollars for that pack and this looks like some more tuna those little cuts are about uh, six seven dollars each and that looks like squid or octopus there and this area, these look like uh, tuna. These uh, cuts of tuna are about four dollars. And here's some more uh, frozen fish. That looks to be uh, tuna fish about uh, four or five dollars a pack it looks like the uh, gill area hello and those are um, slices of tuna these are pretty expensive that's about twenty dollars for those slices and here's some more pre-packaged uh, dry fish and one pack of those is about uh, $18. And here's another ice cream store. You get soft serve ice cream. That's about uh, $2.50. I wonder if they have uh, tuna flavored ice cream. I'll have to ask. Here's a caviar containers. It's about $25. Hello. And some more dried fish. Oh, it's like $8 for the, uh, I think you get a set of them maybe. And that one's about $15. It looks like they got some live uh, seafood here. It's to be crab and uh, shellfish. And 
here's some uh, cuts of salmon. It's about uh, two dollars each. And these look kind of interesting here. That whole fish is about fifteen dollars. And that looks that could almost be a tuna right there. It's about uh, seventy four hundred. So that would be about fifty dollars for that whole fish. And here is uh, an aquarium. I'm not sure if those fish are for sale. They probably are. And that will conclude my tour of the fish market. Thank you for watching.